specially trained and equipped, ready to battle crime, the SWAT team. Bravely dedicating their lives for the safety of our community. Within this elite force, we find Charles Joe. I guess uh, I am the first uh, Korean American to uh, have been selected into this uh, um, unique and interesting job. And it's an honor and a pleasure uh, having been on this team for two years, serving and working hard. And uh, hopefully I can give you a little glimpse of what I do um, in the next few moments to come. Charles Joe and the Special Weapons and Tactics Team serving as guardian angels of Los Angeles. Watch Charles and his SWAT team in action. A quiet morning in Los Angeles. While everyone is sleeping, these people are on call 24 hours a day, securing our community. Gentlemen, uh, to your left, sitting filming, uh, has been approved. 3 a.m. in the morning, the SWAT team is getting ready for another busy day. Because of the dangerous nature of their operations, they must have extensive meetings and preparations before they dispatch. Not knowing when an emergency call can come, SWAT members are required to carry with them all their equipment. They have to be fully armed for protection purposes. This is our main body armor protection that we can keep on. It's coming. This is my M4. This is basically our, what's called our kit. Um, this is the protection that uh, we have and we need to uh, um, get ready up when we uh, go do our warrant, so. For security and tactical purposes, the SWAT team dispatch in specially armored vehicles. Once they are fully armored and in their vehicles, they're ready for their mission. Although a daily routine, it is probably an intense moment for the officers, not knowing what to expect. The SWAT is headed towards the crime scene. Handling high-risk operations beyond the capabilities of regular officers, their missions are much more complex and larger in scale. They move according to plan, doing their best to stay one step ahead of the criminals. Once at the scene, they work as a team. The raid team gets ready for action, while the rest secure the perimeter from a distance. Today's mission was a drug raid. Extensive preparations and plans are made to successfully catch both the criminals and the necessary evidence in the most non-violent, safe way possible. Every mission we do, that's what we do. We, we talk about it afterwards if there's anything we can do better. We always learn from our uh, previous um, missions so we can get better and better um, each time we do it. So that's kind of like our, our attitude. SWAT is an elite paramilitary special operations force established in the late 60s in the U.S., highly trained and equipped with specialized arms such as submachine guns and grenades. As serious organized crime increases at alarmingly intricate levels, the SWAT team continues to extensively prepare for any dangerous missions that come their way to protect both the lives of innocent people as well as themselves. Saturday afternoon, Charles prepares to practice his marksmanship, gearing up and getting all the equipment ready to start his practice run. Once the targets are installed, Charles will have to quickly move and fire selectively as targets randomly pop up on a timed basis. Although these are mock trials, they are intended to recreate live situations using real weapons. Thus, officers are still required to wear heavy body armors for safety measures. 
This is a, um, it's called a PCR, the Practical Combat, combat Range. And uh, each door um, represents a real life scenario where an officer has gotten either shot, killed, or uh, involved in a shooting so that we can practice training in the same environment. Using MP series guns and live ammunitions, SWAT members train hard to develop accurate shooting skills. All right. Good aim is key. But more importantly, they need to learn to quickly make the right choices to save the hostages. Being aware of your surroundings and quickly spotting your enemies is key for survival. Thus, officers must stay mentally focused and take these trainings seriously. This is a hostage target scenario. And the reason why there's a triangle here, we try to aim right inside the triangle. Because uh, if he's got a gun and at, the, at the victim, at the hostage, we only shoot, press one fire shot at the head, hopefully the eye inside the triangle. A deadly situation that can occur any time, any place. Charles continues to practice hard to be fully prepared when this time comes. The first one I ever went through was pretty um, exciting, scary, a um, little bit confusing because you didn't really know. I didn't really know what to expect because it was the very first one. So we have to um, be ready. SWAT focuses on perfect aim in short ranges at quick speeds. They need to master this, not only for their own benefit, but because their lives depend on each other. And every agency, every, every entity in LAPD, SWAT has to train with them to some degree because we need to know what um, they do and they need to know what we do. So if we need them or they need us, we can work together. SWAT was constructed based on teamwork. They move as a team, and they will survive and succeed as a team. The SWAT team effectively use helicopters for transportation and insertion purposes, as well as aerial support. They become the eyes and backups for ground officers. In an emergency, these rear doors come off. They completely come off, and I would clip myself. Basically, they can go take us from building to building to building, rooftop to rooftop, and there are two of us, one on each side, and we will clip ourselves to the inside of the helicopter, but we would stand outside. And if we need to take the shot from up here, we have uh, our optics and we have a rifle that we can sit on and uh, engage a suspect if we need to. We'll be the first ones to see um, what the other SWAT team guys are, uh, are are getting themselves into. We'll have the intelligence and we'll um, relate to them what needs steps and the, the route, of, route of travel that they need to do uh, to get to the location safely. Today is Martial Arts Day. Charles teaches his fellow officers Korean Taekwondo. He voluntarily started these sessions because he found Taekwondo to be effective for combat and self-defense. One of the best times I've had is working and teaching and giving back to the police officers um, uh, in a way that they can personally keep themselves safe and their partners safe when they're working uh, the streets. The streets are very... Um, um, unpredictable. Although some doubted its usefulness at first, many found it to be effective when practiced and began to train on a regular basis. So suspects on the on your bellies facing up, facing forward, so I can get a look at your techniques. His head creating more of that misalignment. 
So when you do so, with your left hand, go to insert that in that rear pocket where that armpit is. Turtle up, and then you guys immediately react off the suspect tur turtling. That's a, that's a great technique. I mean, you know, we get guys that do that all the time in the field, just freeze up and don't want to give us their hands. So, you know, it's a, it's a good technique to be able to use so we don't have to use a taser or whatever else. You know, it's just quick and easy. And... SWAT members are always on standby ready for action when called. In each car there's a police radio scanner so we can hear all the calls that are coming out throughout the city. So if we get a call, we respond anywhere in the city. If we need to go right now, then all my gear is in the back <clears throat> and uh, I can change and uh, respond anywhere I want with uh, lights and siren and, and get there pretty uh, quickly, relatively quickly. On call, 24 hours a day, sometimes with no rest and not knowing what dangers to expect. This sort of dedication may be one of the most stressful and hardest part about being a part of SWAT. L.A. is close to the ocean. Thus, SWAT also handles underwater crime investigations when necessary. Somewhere, I think, 66 or, or 70. Underwater training involves learning how to navigate, operate, and secure an area underwater for long periods of time. Trainings for underwater investigations are important, especially in busy ports like San Pedro with a high potential rate of crime. Many specialized equipments are necessary for underwater operations. The most important gear would be the oxygen tank. Many times officers find themselves underwater for hours at a time during a serious investigation, which requires them to have oxygen tanks with them. I think we could stay in there about an hour. Uh, it all depends on um, how much you breathe. With their two most vital tools, their oxygen tank and their weapon in hand, they're ready to begin. Only the top officers in SWAT can join the underwater dive unit due to the complexity and expertise required in this special subdivision. Thus, Charles and his team take on this job with pride, working hard to make sure they don't let anyone down. Do extraordinary things um, to save people's lives. Um, to be part of that and to be able to supervise those officers, it, it's, it's truly um, makes me proud uh, to just to be part of that. San Pedro Port is LA's busiest cargo terminal, where a lot of commercial shipping takes place. Thus, chances of crime here are high. Today's training site is an area filled with cargo containers. Their goal is to investigate and secure all areas on ground and underwater within the given perimeters. Luckily, they have great weather and water conditions today. Charles and his fellow officers prepare to go underwater. After their last minute review on their navigation They head in. So far, everything seems to be running smoothly. The mock investigation was going well, clearing all target areas and checking for other possible dangerous factors. Then, they notice an otter swimming in close proximity.
first, the marine animals seemed to stay away, allowing Charles and his team to continue their training. That is, until the otter started to approach more aggressively, making it difficult for them to focus. Although the ocean looks peaceful and serene, unexpected incidents like today can make underwater missions very difficult and even dangerous. Furthermore, being underwater limits one's ability to maneuver easily, making these kinds of operations more dangerous. Grab the line and, this handle is weight -bearing. and finally, their underwater training is complete for the day. I might get lost. I a couple of redirecting, but I'm on the compass, so I have to lead them over here. And uh, my target was that five mile per hour sign. You know, as we're surfacing, I said, please let that sign be there. And we popped up right in front, so I feel pretty lucky. I feel good. A good training day. After a long day, Charles comes home and starts to do his last task, cleaning his weapons. SWATs always carry their weapons with them, and it is their responsibility to clean and make sure their weapons are in good condition. For myself, to maintain my equipment and keep it clean because uh, I always keep it um, with me. I don't have anybody else that will clean the guns for me, and we don't want anybody else to clean the guns for us because um, it gives us the personal confidence and the reassurance that I know the condition of my gun and uh, I have to always be ready. If I'm on standby, if I get a call tonight, then... Studying is also a requirement. Once a SWAT doesn't mean always a SWAT. They must undergo continuous training and maintain constant fitness and agility to prove that they still qualify to be a part of SWAT do running every day, we do uh, climbing, we do uh, rappelling, fast rope, and all the different things we do. Out of 14 people that were asked, that made it through the school, when it was all said and done, it was all over with, only seven made it. And uh, I was luckily one of the seven that made it. And after that, you're on uh, probation for one year. And after the first year, you basically uh, keep your mouth shut, your eyes open and your ears open, you learn everything you can during that one year about SWAT. Charles is a faithful Christian. Due to the nature of his job, he is unable to actively participate in church, but he makes sure to attend every Sunday. silence, he prays, probably the same prayer every time. It's a tough job that I have, and the kids know that I have a tough job, so I just hope that they can see the, the lighter side of, of me uh, as a father and as a spiritual leader of the house, family, that I can uh, show that example. That it's not only that the job I do is, is tough and rough and, and a lot of uh, crazy stuff going on, but they can also see that I'm also a a good father, a gentle um, side of me when I come to church. Even if he may be exhausted from work, he always makes time for basketball. And that's because he spends it with his older son, Brandon. They both enjoy and value the time they are able to spend together. Every time he goes out, like, his officers die or get shot or killed. So whenever he comes home, I'm really glad that he came home safely. And we spend a lot of time together when he comes back, eat dinner, watch TV. And next thing when he goes out, um, he comes back and I'm happy to see him again. 
he is proud and excited, watching his sons grow up. But the feeling of guilt lingers, knowing his career takes so much of his time away from them. This is a good opportunity for both of us to bond and get together and hang out and spend some time as father and son. It's a good growing experience for him and a bonding experience for me. Dinner time is their favorite time of day when the family is together. Are you almost, are you Today, almost, Charles will be cooking a special meal for his fellow teammates. Go, Brandon, for, uh, I cooked, I cooked them, uh, my, uh, special. my special drunken chicken so that whenever friends come over, they request that. Oh, I love uh, cooking uh, more on the grill, on the barbecue grill. But uh, yeah, it helps me unwind, helps me relax. And uh, I love feeding friends good food. Charles' wife has been there for him every step of the way as he worked hard to join SWAT. People were actually telling me, oh my gosh, are you sure you want him to do that? Because um, it's going to hurt your family and it's going to affect how much time he has. Um, but the great thing was that he always knew that when he was off work, he was, he was a dad and he was a husband. So um, I never doubted that and every time he had a free moment, he was with the kids and the family. People always say protecting one's family should be more important than going after criminals. But Charles looks at the bigger picture. He ensures their safety by creating a safe environment for them. Charles' mother also respects his decision and career choice, and despite her concerns, continues to support him. From being partners to becoming close friends, to Charles, they are now family. It is early in the morning. Charles puts on his 110-pound body gear. Twice a year we do obstacle course, and, and twice a year we do uh, uh, a run, three-mile run up in the hills with pull-ups, push-ups, and sit-ups. And uh, so we alternate. Every three months we have to do some kind of physical test to stay in uh, SWAT. And if we pa don't pass the test, then we're on probation for three more months which we have time to get back in shape. And the second time, if we don't pass it, then uh, we kick out of SWAT. So it's pretty strict. We have to maintain a good physical uh, uh, fitness, stamina, and condition. So. He has gone down this path more than a million times. This is where he reflects on his life. And this is where he continues to move forward into his next chapter in life. Want, a path he chose, a path he wishes to continue. Despite any obstacles that come their way, they will fight it until they win. That is what SWAT is all about. Even though I hate doing this, I know it's important. So I make sure every time I, I train or exercise, I'm doing my best. And uh, it'll pay off. Down the, down the road when there's a real situation and uh, I need to do stuff like this. I'll be ready. LAPD's best officers will be attending today's ceremony. It looks like there is also good news for the SWAT team. Everyone, including Charles, looks excited. This is a great day for the Los Angeles Police Department, and I uh, am so proud to be your chief today, to represent uh, all of you in, uh, in times that, that uh, will be very difficult. LAPD's Chief of Police, Charles Beck, leads the ceremony, which is being held to reward officers who deserve recognition for their bravery and achievements in serving their community. Slowly, one by one, team by team, 
Officers go up to receive their medals of valor. A moment of pride for officers and a moment of excitement for their families. Charles and his SWAT team also received medals for their bravery and hard efforts on a particular mission where they saved an innocent life. Officer Charles Joe. And even more um, risky and dangerous assignments, but this particularly, the first one that we had, you know, uh, will always uh, be special to me because having been brand new in SWAT two years ago, uh, uh, always be uh, you know, an important, important memory. Appointed to LAPD in 1996, after years of hard work and training, Charles Joe became the first Korean American SWAT member in 2008. He is now determined to do his best to continue to loyally serve and protect his community and hope he will make a lasting mark in the field as a great role model for future Korean American generations to come. I hope that uh, my tenure here in SWAT um, will make a lasting impression to all the younger uh, Korean Americans that hopefully strive to come um, down my path one day in the future and hopefully I can make an impact enough where uh, when I'm long gone they can still remember and the things that I've done. I hope that I can make it, set that example, or be that example for all the, you know, the next generation.